Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR, HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a more compassionate and sustainable world. I'm offering this educational and inspirational show to you freely, but want you to know that your support really makes a difference. We are all in this together. Please consider joining in the vision to help make our world a healthier, kinder, and more sustainable place by making a donation, which you can do right on the TeresaNicasio.com website, uh, and that's Teresa Nicasio, Teresa with a T, T, Teresa with an H, uh, T H E R E S A, Nicasio with an N like Nancy, I C A, and then two S's like Sam I O dot com. If you have a business and would like to share your products or services with my wonderful audience, you can find information about advertising and sponsorship opportunities on my website as well. Please feel free to message me through my website or email me directly at Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. Be sure to tune in next week when Chief Vacation Officer Marco Aguiar cracks me up, will be joining us to talk about how mindful vacationing can be a powerful tool for personal transformation and discovery. Then the following week, we have Carolyn Moassisi. Uh, she's going to be talking with us about food labeling and about how what you don't know actually can harm you. Uh, she's a wonderful leader in, um, in educating around uh, not just food labeling, but food allergies and so forth. Today's show is live, so feel free to join in during the program if you have any questions for today's guests that come up as we are listening. Uh, If you do call in, just let our producer, Jay, know what your question is so that he can pass it along to us during the break. And if we can, we will address your question right on the air. Uh, For those of you in the U.S., you can call in toll-free at 800-555-5453. And if you're outside the U.S., the number is 310-371-5444. Those numbers are on my TeresaNicasio.website or TeresaNicasio.com website as well for your reference. When you just go to the website, you click on the radio tab at the top, and it shows it right there down on that page. So if you haven't done so, done so already, you might want to change into your favorite tropical clothes as we prepare to our next guest who is joining us all the way from Hawaii. And you can bet that I'm wearing my muumuu right now. And I actually am. It's very colorful and fun. I work festively for this, for this interview. I'm so happy to share with you today Dr. Jessica Renfer. Dr. Jessica Renfer is a naturopathic doctor practicing on the big island of Hawaii. She specializes in natural, holistic fasting and detoxification methods to help individuals cleanse their body, mind, and spirit. Her philosophy is that disease is our greatest teacher and that physical symptoms have roots in the mind as well as in our emotional experiences and responses. She works with people to help them remove the blockages within them that inhibit their um, ability to uh, fully express their health and vitality. And her experience working with patients, specifically through fasting process, which she's going to talk about quite a bit today, Dr. Jessica believes that we are much stronger than we realize. She's also come to have an unshakable belief in the power of the body, mind, heart, and spirit to heal if and when it is given the proper space, nurturing, and motivation. Her observation is that the path to greater health isn't reliant on what we add to our lives but is actually more impacted by what we are willing and able to let go of. That's just like such a powerful message right there. When we let go of things that are not natural and also let go of the harmful habits of the body, mind, and spirit, we create the space for healing to occur. Dr. Renfer integrates other natural healing modalities in her work, including herbal infusions, acupuncture, 
thermal manipulation, um, healing therapies. She uses IV therapies as well um, and, and several other things. She also works collaboratively with other healthcare professionals to maximize the healing benefits possible uh, for the pe- uh, pe- people she serves. Dr. Jessica is here with us today to talk about spring cleaning in a really positive way uh, and spring cleaning our body through natural and age-old detoxification methods. Jessica, welcome to the show, and thank you so, so much for joining us. Aloha. So happy to be here. Aloha. Oh, my God. It's a great way to start. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Jessica, can you start by sharing with us a bit about where your interest in detoxification came from? Well, we learned a lot about fasting while I was in naturopathic medical school, and it immediately drew me, drew my interest. Um, My personal experience was through a vision quest, which combined Mm. fasting and isolation in nature, and the combination of both being on my own, communing with nature, and also not taking anything in. It was one of the most powerful healing experiences in my own personal life. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just started diving in more. Um, And there's so much information out there, but also so many different methods. And it can be fun but overwhelming at the same time, Um, you know, trying to figure out what these best best methods are. Mm -hmm. And um, personally, my interest in fasting was most, it most began in the, the spiritual aspects that it's been used to commune with the divine within and then and then I started getting into more of the physical benefits and just saw that it's just so amazing mind body mm-hmm. and spirit it's, mm-hmm. I fully believe in the power of cleansing and fasting for that mm-hmm. so before we get into some of the physical benefits would you be willing to talk a little bit about uh, what you discovered um, on, the, on the more spiritual realm. Is there anything in particular you feel you would be able to share? I know some of those things can be difficult to describe, but if there's anything you would feel like you, you know, could share with the audience about, um, about the, the, how that touched you? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, most generally it was, it brings about a sense of clarity mm-hmm. that, and a sense of humbleness as well. You know, mm-hmm. when when you're not when you're not eating, your energy level and ability to move around and keep oneself busy goes down, and you spend a lot more time with yourself and just yourself. And mm-hmm. when I went out into the desert, I was in a place of a bit of confusion in my life. Um, I felt I was being drawn in a lot of different directions and had gone through some things that were, I guess, making me question who I thought I was. You know, we, we, we build up this picture and idea of who we are, but it's not necessarily the full full expression of who we are. Mm-hmm. And, and for me, it was being brave in the world and that I had never been out in nature by myself before. And that I could be out there in the wild with not even a tent and with no food and find that inner strength and faith in myself and also in this life and in the universe that will always be taken care of and it may not look like what I had imagined, but that usually it's even more beautiful than I could have imagined. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so, yeah, a lot of it for me was that self, developing that self-worth, self-confidence, and self-faith. Mm-hmm. Nice. So it sounds like, you know, in, almost in a way it, uh, it, it broke the, the trance of the busyness and broke the trance of the, maybe the negative self-talk and the confusion, it, and it brought you more into a place of mindfulness and, and living in the present moment. Exactly, yeah, and just that mind and heart connection, I felt like they were finally willing to hear one another, and they weren't arguing against pulling me in different directions, Uh, Mm -hmm. and just a sense of peace. Uh, I often will kind of emphasize that, you know, people are always seeking happiness, but really, I think it's peace that we're actually looking for, 
because there's so many ebbs and flows in life. And um, I feel like that's what I really gained was what it felt like to be at peace within myself. Mm-hmm. That's really beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, you talked a little bit as you were, it's maybe, I mean, maybe we should talk about this later if you want to hold off till later we can, but, but you're mentioning about when you fast, how your energy level goes down. And I have to say that, I, you know, it's a whole other, probably a whole other show would be talking about the value of humility, um, being humbled. It's, a, it's, it's quite powerful. Um, but, but the piece that you mentioned about the energy going down and vitality, that, that I think touches upon what a lot of people, um, are concerned about and actually I think have reason to be concerned about with the idea of fasting and it certainly is something that I used to you know really be concerned about the idea of fasting is how it can negatively impact your vitality and and you know and of course there's obviously some people who you know maybe if they have blood sugar problems or other health issues that it may not be feasible can you talk a little bit about um, about that that fear the concern and um, and maybe even Again, we can talk more about this after as well. But which, um, who might not be a good candidate, or you know, who may be really need to be wary of of the idea of fasting? Yes, of course. Um, the first thing I would say would be that anyone who has a really strong fear of fasting shouldn't. Hold on a moment. It's hard to hear you. So can you start again? Oh, anyone who has a significant fear of fasting. Uh huh. It's not the right thing for. I mean, and if you think physiologically, when you're fearful, you're stressed, your cortisol levels tend to rise, and you're not able to get into that good resting state that so much of the benefit from fasting comes from. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a lot of things to consider, and it's not something to just enter into on a whim. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's very important that your bowels are moving and that you're properly hydrated, that your nutrient status is high enough such that you have enough antioxidants to process the things that will be loosened up. Um, You would never want to do it alone Mm -hmm. because there is a risk for fainting. Blood pressure tends to drop as well as blood sugar, and people do faint. And, you know, it's, it's not... So much the fainting that's the problem. It's what you might hit on the way down, um, but that is a risk. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, the best the best way to do it is after a period of, you know, a few months at least of preparation, which is, you know, letting go of those things that aren't necessarily health promoting. You know, certain kinds of like processed food, soda. Uh, nicotine, you know, these different things that, um, yeah, just aren't necessarily good for us. Mm-hmm. And and then also mentally preparing for what you were saying is that, you know, it, you some people make the mistake of still trying to live their normal, regular lives, and mm-hmm. that doesn't really work. You know, you mm-hmm. need to be able to sit quietly and, you know, Have time to stretch and rest, and, you know, you're not going to be going and working your 40-hour work weeks while doing a fast. Mm -hmm. That's not not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And there is a lot. It's becoming a lot more popular, and so I have seen some people who just, you know, read about it in the magazine and try, and then they end up feeling worse than when they started. And it's just, you know, the whole Fasting is a lot more than just not eating mm-hmm. for a few days. It's preparation. It's how to come out of it. It's the support. There's so much to it, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't just recommend anyone doing it on a whim. I would mm-hmm. say, you know, speak to someone who can help supervise or has a lot of experience before just trying. I mean, it's an amazing therapy. But like anything, needs to be done safely and mindfully and, um, you know, from an educated place. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I um, just want to share with all of you listening, um, I wanted Jessica to come on the show. Uh, you know, she does have this very, she, she does run a water fasting retreat, which is not just water fasting and uh, incorporates a lot of other elements. 
But um, the, the reason why I wanted to have her on was, you know, to talk a little bit about that because I know some of you are, are curious about it. A, it is becoming more popular, and there can be amazing health benefits. But I wanted her to come on because I wanted her to also speak about some of the, the risks and challenges, not with just, with just water fasting, but also with detoxification in general because that has become – um, quite a popular, uh, quite a popular thing, and, and uh, almost like a, a perceived to be an easy fix. Okay, well I'm going to go party, and I'm going to go eat a bunch of junk food, and and live a crazy life, and smoke, and do whatever else I'm going to do, and then I'm just going to cleanse. And as, as as Jessica's pointing out, it really is. It's much more than that, and, and there's a there's a, a huge element of the psychological elements, um, but there's also physical uh, issues that come with. Um, when you start, when you do detoxification and you uh, stop bringing in other things and the body's natural detoxification system kicks in, is that your your system can actually be flooded with toxins and it can be pretty overwhelming and, and actually counter healthy uh, and potentially even in, um, dangerous. So this is the reason I wanted her to come on as well. So Jessica, would you be willing to talk a little bit about um, about some of those those issues and you know what? You know, demystify a little bit about what is detoxification because it's it's not just this cool thing that you do after you know after New Year's uh, New Year's Eve party and such. Yeah. So, as Teresa said, there's many there's many methods of detoxification, and and the first misnomer is actually most detoxification it, it's should be called depuration. It's actually a different word, and that's for enhancing the body's natural detox system to get rid of toxic waste. And now that can be, we, we create a lot of metabolic byproducts just through normal processes in our bodies that need to be eliminated. And the issue in today's world is that in addition to those, we are constantly being exposed to pesticides and, you know, preservatives and these unnatural, um, I guess, chemicals that our body then also has to deal with, and mm -hmm. it can be easily overwhelmed. And you add that to the fact that our diets are generally not very rich in phytonutrients and antioxidants, it kind of is this situation where you're being exposed to a lot of harmful substances and then you also do not have what it takes to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. And so this must be considered before doing any detox is that you have to look at your overall burden. And people who are really sick and really toxic, if they try to detoxify and it goes too quickly, they can definitely end up doing more harm than good. I mean, mm -hmm. even just switching someone from a standard American diet over to, say, like a mostly plant-based vegan diet, mm -hmm. they can end up very, very sick because mm -hmm. all of these things that have been stored away all of a sudden are being are flooding into the bloodstream and into the liver, and the liver can easily get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then there's one thing that happens during a lot of fasting is electrolytes do tend to go up and down. And so anyone that has any history of arrhythmia um, really shouldn't fast because when potassium starts to go down and sodium starts to go up, it can predispose foreign arrhythmia, which obviously that's not something that we want to happen. Mm -hmm. um, other things like once you're, you know, like uh, a lot of people talk about fasting for blood sugar regulation, and mm -hmm. I find it very useful when someone has just been diagnosed and is just starting that insulin resistance phase. But once someone is dependent on insulin, they their their levels are so sensitive that it can it can send them into a coma if you don't they don't eat and they have too much insulin in their system. It drops the blood sugar to a point that, you know, the brain starts starts to take a break. <laughs> um, and and then there's, you know, if I get a lot of people who are interested in fasting as adjunctive cancer therapy mm -hmm. and 
You have to be very careful with that too, especially if there has been any use of chemotherapeutics. I basically learned, and it's, I pretty much will not fast someone who has gone through chemo because those drugs are so potent and can be stored that you don't want, you don't really want those to be recirculated around. It mm-hmm. just doesn't seem to be a beneficial thing. Mm-hmm. How, and how then, about- yeah, there's also people who have serious addiction history, you know, serious substance abuse. Mm-hmm. Um, it, fasting can be extremely difficult for those folks as well. So, mm-hmm. so, so you know, those of you who are listening, um, it's it's there's you know, a reason why they talk about the importance of of uh, you know getting medical supervision of some sort and by someone who really is trained and understands thoroughly understands the detoxification system. Um, you know, we think about it just going on, say, a raw vegan diet for a while, which can have the possibility of being extremely healing, um, can also potentially put you at higher risk of of having to um, your body having to deal with an excess of toxins. Uh, and you know, I know that I, a lot of people know that I became a gourmet raw food chef and a you know, raw food nutrition educator. And somebody says, "Oh, you know, I tried doing that. I tried eating raw food, and it's not about eating only raw food, but it's just one of those things." And they said, "Oh, I just felt worse." And this kind of explains some of why they might have felt worse, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it was probably was, you know, mm-hmm. having some benefit, but their body wasn't prepared wasn't prepared or they weren't having enough bowel movements, their liver wasn't fully equipped to deal with everything that was being loosened up. Right, right. So, you know, Well, we need to take a short break, so stick around. We're going to be back with Dr. Jessica after the break. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class, or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better.
Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. For those of you who are just joining us, we have been talking with integrative naturopathic Dr. Jessica Renfer, who's visiting us all the way from the Big Island of Hawaii. I love that. Um, before the break, Jessica, we were talking a little bit about about fasting and some of the risks and benefits. Some of the, you know, we can, I think we talk more about the benefits later. But um, one of the things you and I had spoken about was about the impact of fasting on the microbiome, which is really the, I think this is kind of the new, the new big um, uh, opening in terms of health. And, and so I'm wondering if you talk a little bit about what the impact of fasting, as far as, as we know at this point of what you've, what you've observed, uh, is on the microbiome. Great, yeah. So there's so much research coming out on how the health and diversity of our microbiome, and that being the the um, commensal bacteria and other organisms living in our GI tract that help us not only digest our food, they create vitamins, they're a functioning part of our immune system. It's so important. And one of the amazing benefits with fasting is that it can help to correct imbalances. Um, and so when you're fasting, you're obviously not taking any food in and you know, is related to sugar. Um, sugar tends to feed yeast, and there's, from what I have seen, and I talk to doctors all over the place, there's so much overgrowth of yeast in our digestive tracts, and there's many reasons behind that, and one of those is, you know, the increased sugar intake in our in our diets. Um, and when you're fasting, you're basically starving those out, and it creates mm-hmm. an opportunity for the healthier health promoting species, you know, like the lactobacillus and um, the, the this other bacillus species that are actually what we need inside of us. And during a fast, the overall numbers of microbes go down, and then through proper receding using probiotics, fermented food, um, you know, highly nutrient-dense vegetable you can feed the good guys, basically, and Mm -hmm. they will expand and crowd out the ones that aren't as Mm health-promoting. And I was actually at a conference last weekend, and there was a whole talk on what happens during fasting. And there's one species that has a long name, and I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's responsible for breaking down mucus layers. And so during a fast, you can start breaking down these mucus layers that are in the GI tract and allowing for new mucus to then be released, which is where a lot of our immune system comes from. Hmm. And so I thought that was really interesting that, you know, during the ketosis state, which is what you enter into fasting, these microbes are more active and helping to break down, yeah, break down these mucus layers that tend to build up which, you know, inhibit our ability to absorb nutrients, to digest things, um, can cause a lot of various GI symptoms, bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation. Um, And so that's, I mean, and just from my personal experience, you know, we've had people who, you know, they eliminate worms during the fast and Mm -hmm. they have constipation issues they've had for years that then resolve. Um, and so there is a definite effect on the microbiome during a fasting process. So, so how does, it, when you mention the worms, what do you, what are you saying? So how is it that they get rid of the worms? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, uh, essentially, you know, a lot of us do have different parasites within us. Um, and I would say about 30% of the people that come through during a colon hydrotherapy session, which is where you're irrigating the colon, will have some sort of rope parasite or something coming out. And, you know, you're starving them, and so they become weakened, and then they just decide to leave the body. And kind of the idea behind the program is it's this idea of terrain modification where, you know, you create a terrain such that these non-health-promoting organisms, they don't want to be there anymore. They, they no longer need to be there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, there's some kind of weird things. Uh, yeah, it does. So, 
So, yeah. so you know, you're talking about when people stop eating sugar. You're not talking about just sugar, but even foods that everything turns into sugar with food. So is that part of why the the water fasting? Because then you, there, there's no food that then turns into sugar in the body. Yeah, exactly. And what happens during a water fast is a little bit different than a juice fast or some of these other ones. Is yeah, you're not taking anything in, and so your body goes fully into its rest and digest and heal phase, and so the immune system gets ramped up, um, all the macrophages and these white blood cells that are, you know, um, responsible for healing, but also, you know, in, in simple terms, kind of chewing up things that no longer need to be there. Um, mm-hmm. Everything gets, gets ramped up, and so I definitely notice a difference in water fasting as opposed to something like a juice fast. Mm. As the depth of healing, and um, yeah, so it seems so. it seems to he- speed the healing a little bit more. It just goes more deeper, I would say, and it's I what? think I think it partially is you know the physical side of things, but also in the mental and emotional sphere, of you're not taking anything in; you're just reliant on just you, everything mm-hmm. from within, nothing from the outside. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, so there's that psychological element too. Can you you mentioned ketosis? Can you can you share with the audience a little bit about what ketosis is, and and you know why how the body does it, and then you know what starts happening when you're in ketosis? Yeah, so essentially, in the first basically 12 hours of of a water fast, your body uses up all of its glucose and all of its stored glucose, and then it switches over into this metabolic state called ketosis, where the body uses lipids as fuel. And it's really amazing. It's this pathway that takes, you know, the broken down products of, of fat and cr- creates through a process and different enzymatic processes, a molecule that then goes into the energy production pathway. And so it just skips glycolysis. It's pretty amazing the way that it's designed. And what happens then is, of course, you're breaking down fat. Um, it also can use scar tissue and these different things um, as fuel. Going around and whatever is non-essential tissue can be broken down and used as fuel. Mm-hmm. And these these ketone bodies have been are being studied more and more as far as their neuroprotective effect, you know, mood regulating. There's a lot of benefits of ketone bodies um, that are they're being elucidated through research now. No, oh, that sounds like it's a whole other show. It um, is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Well, you know what? Already we need to take another break, but Dr. Jessica is going to be back with us after the break, um, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about detoxification and um, and uh, fasting, and, and I'm going to also have her talk a little bit about the program that she runs because uh, I think it's one that's going to really intrigue, intrigue many of you. All right, so stick around. We'll be right back. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com. Or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. 
She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we celebrate everyday heroes and we work together to help them make help to make the world a better place. If you're just joining us today, we are talking about detoxification, spring cleaning through detoxification with integrative naturopathic physician and healer, Dr. Jessica Renfer. I throw in the healer part because I see her as a healer. She may not embrace that, but I do. Um, Jessica, we were talking about uh, detoxification before, and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about spring cleaning and, and what people can do. You know, something you alluded to before, there's some things you can do even bef- even if you don't want to go full on and do any major detoxing, but want to clean up your life a bit. Yeah, so, you know, if, I, I try to draw a lot of inspiration from nature, and when you look around, it's springtime, and things are beginning to blossom, it's the time of new life. You know, we've made it through the winter, we've gone through this letting go process, and we're now being reborn in, you know, as beings of the cycle of life. And mm-hmm. from the traditional Chinese medicine perspective, the spring is the time of the liver, and we all know the liver is intimately related to uh, detoxification and just the internal cleaning of our own system. And so this is a really good time to spring clean. And, you know, I often will tell people to start in their home. You know, start by looking at, like, what am, what are you using that has the chemicals in it and um, mm-hmm. isn't natural. And so I refer people to EWG.org and the Environmental Working Group. Mm-hmm. And this can go through, you know, cleaning products and shampoos and conditioners and all these things that we need to move away from as they, you know, there's pretty good research out there now that, you know, a lot of these chemicals aren't good for us, aren't good for our homes. And so that's usually what a lot of people start is like going through their cupboards and saying, all right, what, what on these ingredient lists do I not recognize? Mm-hmm. And um, moving away from those. And that's why this EWG.org is great because they have a rating system for household products. It also has the like dirty dozen and clean 15 um, for produce, you know, which, which produce have the highest level of pesticides and which has the lowest. And they also go through all the beauty products, which is really a great thing. So highly recommend checking out that website. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, looking around and getting rid of clutter. You know, clutter on the outside creates a cluttery situation on the inside. And so, you know, going through and letting go and cleaning up and organizing, it's good for our psyche and our emotional health as well to have a clean space that we're living in. And... That's a good place to start. And then from there, moving into, all right, what things am I putting in my body that aren't the best for me? You know, Mm -hmm. and it's about being compassionate with oneself and realizing that some of the things that we choose, it's not just a matter of sheer willpower. You know, a lot of times we know these things aren't good for us, but for whatever reason, they do something for us, which is, you know, they help us relax or they help give us energy, or, you know, I mean, there's a lot of foods that are highly, they have, like, addictive qualities. And so it's understanding that there's more than just the physical substance as to why we may maybe choose to ingest things that aren't the best. And so I always tell people, you know, start, start easy, you know, like add in some greens each day or, you know, switch from the soda to sparkling water, you know, gentle steps are easiest to maintain. Mm-hmm. 
And and just, I mean, the best thing for detox really is drinking enough water and moving your body. And so it's just starting even one exercising one time a week. It's amazing how many patients I see do not exercise maybe one time a month. And on the flip side of that, in just adding in 30 minutes of exercise once a week, they start to feel a lot better. And then it's easier to move it into that, you know, three times a week. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, our bodies are meant to live healthily. They're meant to detoxify. They have We have everything within us that we need to live a healthy lifestyle. It's just establishing these basic, I call them like tenants of health, of so water, good food. Are you moving? Do you have joy in your life? Do you play? You know, are you, do you take time for yourself? And you know, figuring out one way within that category to show yourself love. And that's really what health is about in my mind, is loving oneself and choosing things that are good for us because we love and honor ourselves. Mm. That's wonderful, Jessica. Um, So, Jessica, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to talk a little bit about, obviously we don't have a lot of time, but to talk a little bit about the program you have. It's called the Terrain Modification Program, which you mentioned earlier, which obviously, as as you were talking about, it it won't be for everyone, but that it can be for some people. And can you talk a little bit about what you do, um, how you go through a very thorough assessment prior to ensure that people are a good fit um, and, and, you know, who... You know, what, what it looks like a little bit. What, what kinds of things do you incorporate in, in their, this very integrative program? Great. Yeah, so it's a very rigorous application pro- process. You know, we have a really long health questionnaire, and I do a consult with everyone. And, you know, some of the things I mentioned in the beginning are contraindications, and a lot of it is actually attitude and um Stability. You know, this is not a program for someone who is in crisis. It's a, progr- a program for people who are generally on a healthy path and want to go deeper or are feeling stuck. And, and so we really tried to create a holistic program, meaning we address mind, body, heart, spirit, all of it. And, you know, of course there's the fasting, and we use a lot of homeopathy and botanical medicine to support detoxification and as well as, um, you know, some of the different symptoms that might come up to help people move through them. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do mind-body medicine uh, where, you know, we do group activities as well as individual, like we call it holistic counseling, where, you know, we, we basically help guide people to find within themselves where those mental and emotional blocks may lie as well as making the connection between the physical and the mental emotional sphere. You know, we all of us here fully believe that most physical symptoms are reflections of some sort of mental or emotional um, disharmony. You know, mm-hmm. the body speaks. The body's trying to tell us that something is not working for us. And so we're really passionate about helping people to understand and integrate that connection. And during a fast, um, and then we also do a lot of creative therapies. You know, I'm a musician as well, and I do a lot of music therapy. We bring in this amazing artist who does a whole, like, shamanic diving into the soul art program. And then, of course, we do adventures. We're on Hawaii, and part of the magic and healing is just this island and the abundant wild nature that we're so blessed mm-hmm. to have at our, in our footsteps. Um, and then, of course, there's like you know the saunas and the yoga. It's it's and journaling. It, there's a lot to it, but it's really trying to cleanse and let go of things on every level to then go back excited to live a new, more compassionate, vital, um, excited life. Great. And and what's the website for your program or to get more information? You can, of course, get it from the website, my website, TeresaNicasio.com, on, on the Jessica's page, but also you have a website, Inspired Life. Yes. It's, um, well, my personal, I do have a private practice here as well, and that's InspiredLightNaturalHealth.com. 
-huh. And we have a separate website for the retreat that is Terrain Modification Retreat of Hawaii.com. Okay. Great. And okay. Yes. Perfect. Well, we need to go for another break, but we have one more segment to Because You Asked, and Dr. Jessica is going to be joining us answering some of your questions. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. If you're like the 8 out of 10 women that say finding genes that fit is a problem, well, your problem is solved. Lee Genes has done extensive research, and they have genes that fit. There's even an online Lee Fit Finder so you can find the right fit for you. Imagine jeans that instantly slim you with a custom fit and no gap waistband. And guys, kids, Lee has jeans for you, too. Click through to Lee's Jeans on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and get what fits. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! Plant-Based Recipes for a Gluten-Free Diet at Amazon.com or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we celebrate life, love, and kindness, while also acknowledging the challenges that are a part of living. Uh, now is the part of the show where your questions can be answered in the Because You're Asked you ask segment. Um, to send in questions for a future program, simply click on the Ask Teresa tab on my website, and that's TeresaNicasio.com. Teresa with an H, Nicasio with an N like Nancy, and two S's like Sam. Um, or email me through the contact form or directly at Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. Dr. Ter- uh, Dr. Jessica Ren- uh, Renfer has been here with us today talking about natural healing and detoxification, and she's now going to be joining us to answer your questions about this topic um, that's really often misunderstood and, and it's very confusing. Um, and as I was mentioning to Jessica, we have a lot of questions. We'll answer what we can, and we're going to fly through, and um, this is our last segment today. So first we'll say start with this one. Hi, I've just found out that I have a problem with candida. When I went to the Internet, I freaked out by all the information out there and thought I would ask you what you usually recommend when you're working with someone who has a candida problem, and can detoxification help? Well, I would say first you definitely want to work with a practitioner. Um, you know, naturopathic doctors were really well trained to deal with this kind of thing. There's, it's usually a, quite a process, um, but fasting can definitely be a part of that process. You know, usually it's dietary changes, maybe some herbs or different things to help, you know, lower the the yeast population, and then fasting can really work well in that process, but it's not a a cure-all, I would say. It needs, usually can take a few months to fully get a, um, a, you know, yeast imbalance under control, 
Mm-hmm. But definitely, I mean, it's nothing to freak out about. It's very common, um, and a lot of it is just, you know, starting off with getting rid of the sugar, just mm-hmm. starting there and seeing how that sugar's goes. Sugar's a biggie, yeah. yeah. All right, let's yeah. just jump to the next one, which you sort of, I think, addressed a bit. There might be something else to add. Uh, can fasting help with parasites, and what herbs or supplements uh, help to get rid of them? Yes, fasting can definitely help with parasites. Um, yes, I did talk about that a little bit. And there are herbs and supplements. However, we don't really like going after the attack of these bugs because what can happen is if you attack them, they can fight back. And if they die too quickly, they can release a lot of toxic byproducts that can make you more sick. So mm. that's why we do you know, the fasting because it makes it basically that they don't want to live there anymore. And then we use gentle herbs to to encourage them to leave, mm. um, you know, and, yes, there's a lot of different herbs out there, but it kind of depends on what the issue is, your personal constitution, and so, again, I would say, you know, finding a, a naturopath who can help you through that, um, usually they're involved in sort of stool testing to kind of see what might be there, um, and not everyone I've seen has parasitic issues, but mm. it definitely is something that does, that can cause some pretty chronic um, distress. So. Yeah, it can emotionally distress. Yeah. I've seen that with a lot of my yeah. clients too. It's very emotionally mm-hmm. distressing. You know, just the thought of having parasites. Is, we all have parasites of different sorts of, you know, if, uh, or we have other creatures, whether it's, you know, yeah. and there are other so things. But it's, and, it's psychologically, uh, you know, it feels a little weird. And I think, you know, they're serving a purpose. You know, you look at a, a parasite in nature and they're eating decayed matter. And so they're kind of, in my philosophy, and it's, you know, of course, hypothetical at this point, but what I'm finding is, you know, it's, it's the parasites are there to eat the morbid matter that's in our colon or in our, you know, and, and also I've noticed the people that tend to have more parasites tend to have more emotional stagnation. You know, there's something that's eating away at them. You know, mm, literally, yeah, so, yeah. You know, wow. mm-hmm. and and you know, this I forget what it was, but I heard something about you know, in our bodies, the, the what the percentage is of other beings that are there as opposed to what's part of our actual physiological being, uh, our DNA. Uh, what's what is that? What is that percentage? Do you know? Oh, I, I it's I want to say it's between like eighty and ninety percent of the DNA within our body is bacterial or other. You know, yeah. only 10% of our physical self is actually our own DNA. That's so we are crazy little amazing. mini microbiome universes, you know. It's yeah, not just us, yeah. It's you know? pretty humbling in itself, isn't it? it? Well, most of them. <laughs> right. Um, oh, here's a good, that's a good interesting, interesting question. Are mono diets good for detoxifying? I've, I've got that question from a few people, actually. Um, if so, which foods do you recommend most if someone wants to do a mono diet? Hmm. Um, yeah, that is an interesting question. I, I know I've been recently researching um, grape stuff that's kind of coming in from Europe, that people are basically just eating a bunch of grapes, and they're grapes? finding great benefit from that. Yeah, huh. I thought, you know, I mean, you know, the grape skin is has that. Resveratrol. Um, yeah, exactly, the anti, you know, antioxidant. And, you know, I know people do watermelon and have felt really great doing, like, a day of watermelon. Mm-hmm. Um, really flushes out the kidneys. Um, yeah, and I would say, you know, it's going to be something, you know, here in Hawaii, like I've done a papaya, like hmm. just a, a day of just papaya because it's highly enzymatic. And it just, I guess, kind of intuitively ended up doing that, but I felt benefit from it. So, I, you know, generally from what I know with the mono diet, it's, you know, one, one day to a, a max, like a few days. Uh-huh. You know, um, but, and generally speaking, I've seen people do that more with fruit as opposed to, so, mm. wow. um, yeah, wow. I mean, I, I tend to move away from too much mono, just the idea of just one thing at a time, mm-hmm. um, just for the diversity factor, but mm-hmm. again, like, you know, a day or two here of just the watermelon or just the grapes, you know, people definitely are showing benefit from. Mm-hmm. So. 
Right. Well, we're getting to near the end here, so I'm just wondering if you had one takeaway, Jessica, uh, for our listeners today um, that you'd love for them to walk away with from today. What, what, what would that be? Just that, you know, we think, you know, I mentioned before, that just that we're a lot stronger than we think we are and that, you know, everything that we need to gracefully survive is within us. And and just, you know, it's finding our own inner strength, our own inner path. And, and I guess that's why, you know, I like fasting so much is because it allows people to take a step back from their lives and just feel and see where they're at and, like, mm-hmm. what messages are coming through, like, what their purpose is, what, you know, who they are, at least in this moment, is what's ever shifting. And and just learning to love and accept ourselves for who we are in the moment and that it will always, it's always shifting. And that, mm-hmm. you know, there's a, my, my favorite Rumi poem is, Essentially that, you know, we are both the closed and the open fist and that sometimes we're expanding and sometimes we are contracting. And the two together balance and allow us to fly as a bird. Mm. And so it's in the fast, in the fasting process and you're just, you're diving deep within and diving deep down and being willing to face yourself. And it's right. a lot less scary than people think it is. Right. And usually we're just relieved to find find that spark of love within yeah, that right. then radiates outwards and makes us just better, more compassionate human beings out in the world. Wonderful. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. And, folks, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Let me know if you or someone you know would like to feature products or services as an advertiser or show sponsor. You can contact me through my website, TeresaNicasio.com, or email me directly. Be sure to turn in, tune in next week when Marco Aguiar will be here talking about the power of intentional vacationing. Then in two weeks, Caroline Molassesi will be here talking about food labeling and allergies. You can send in your questions for me at any of, uh, for any of our upcoming guests. Um, uh, by clicking on the Ask Teresa tab on my website. And keep sending in your great questions. It's a wonderful opportunity to offer information that can make your life that much easier and healthier. I'm Teresa Nicasio, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Bye for now, and have a great week. 